And moving away from your experience, we would like to talk about Saudi Arabia. I mean, like you said earlier, Saudi Arabia is the hub of Middle East uh, in terms of the industry, in terms of the job opportunities. And it's a very attractive country for, especially for chemical and petroleum engineers. Again, just like you said you earlier, earlier as well, due to the financial reasons, due to the job prospect, and of course, finally being the uh, oil tycoon that it is. Uh, for the people that are planning or, or wish to go and work in Saudi Arabia, what would be some of the tips and guides that you would be willing to share? See, I will feel that uh, one thing is sure. Uh, see, in my time, I was you know, a little lucky enough uh, but I feel they should do some good amount of work in India. I feel that uh, they should be thorough with some experience to land a good job first, because no one will teach you here. It's not India, uh, you the home country which you are in, where people you know how they are, how their work culture is, how to extract information. You know that, but when you are exposed to other nationalities, you are not aware. Really, you are not aware. So you have to do it on your own. They will just directly give you the responsibility and work. Mm -hmm. So I still think that uh, an experience in India is a plus point, is a major advantage uh, uh, working here back then. Uh, the process is pretty similar. If you, uh, if you go to any consultant or you see the newspapers article, if you get any opportunity, you can go and directly get an interview. Uh, the process, uh, you know, the visa process is quite, uh, you know, not complex as, as terms of European and uh, other countries are concerned. They will uh, directly give you the visa and they will do uh, every other process. Once they feel you are eligible enough to work there, mm -hmm. okay. once, uh, uh, once you are uh, done with it. And secondly, uh, when, when, when you are out of uh, that country, I mean, for example, you are giving all that medical examination, everything. Mm -hmm. So you need to be uh, aware that you will be out of your family. Mm -hmm. For initial one or two years or one year, you can say. After that, you can bring your family once you are settled. Because the first three months is your uh, probation period. In that, they will judge you whether you will you are capable to work properly or not. So in that three months, uh, sometimes uh, they will feel no, it is not possible. You have to come back. So you are your job is not certain outside. So you cannot bring your family because it's too hectic. To again go back from there so initially three to four months uh, six months you will get uh, time to settle it down you have to be aware that one year i will be out of uh, out of in connection you know with my family so after that once your job is secure and everything is done you can you are aware uh, what uh, what market what grocery you can get then you can bring your family there and you can stay there uh, in, in any uh, any area so this one thing. Secondly, if you are really trying to go to Saudi Arabia, there is some other process also. You have to take some visas, uh, visit visas or something. Uh, you have to take like, uh, you know, free visa. Free visa is available. So free visa is available. Then you can get that free visa, go there, uh, find some opportunity and then they will uh, give you the, 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 the transfer. But I guess... Uh, better to get a consultant or something uh, related to proper company because you will get a proper company there. Uh, you get a professionalism there. You will get a professional company there. They will have your security will be there when you go uh, back there. So that is a good process. That is the only process which I recommend many, anyone who are trying to go to Saudi Arabia to get because it will be your safety first. Of course. Safety is really important. So I will recommend to go to any good consultant, which is good enough to get uh, opportunities from Saudi Arabia, even from UAE, from Qatar, uh, whatever it is possible, and then apply. Yeah. So okay. Materials, yeah. Amazing. Thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, but then, because you know, like I said earlier in the beginning, in the very beginning as well, that moving to Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, of course, has Arabic language, and uh, and moving out there, then there is a huge language barrier if you want to go and find job and work and so on. But in your experience, how has that been since you've been working in as a chemical engineer? Do you feel that did you need, did you have the need to learn Arabic or was English good enough to work with the operators and all the other senior management? See, uh, the best part of uh, working in uh, Middle East is that they are open to every language. 
mm-hmm. yes they are they the 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 main language is arabic which is the uh, you know the main ceo of that company or the main manager will speak the arabic language but you know uh, hamza uh, they are educated mm-hmm. they are into the chemical stream they are not into the food industry where you are opening a grocery shop or a furniture shop it's mm-hmm. nothing like that. they are educated they are uh, you know uh, some professional doctors and some professional engineers or engineer holders are mm-hmm. starting up a plant so they are aware of the english language english language is widely spoken uh, in terms of technicalities that's sir mm-hmm. because you, there are certain terminology which you need the help of uh, mm-hmm. uh, technical knowledge of uh, english you can say but you yeah to go to that superiority uh, arabic is a addition bonus for you you will get that bonus you will get that benefit when you go to any restaurant or when you go to any malls or when you go to interacting with the higher authority it will add your benefit but mm-hmm. uh, knowing english language even your upper management are aware of it they are learning they are saying the same thing and the added ad- advantage is that you know uh, the immigration process where uh, the 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 lower workers are mostly uh, you can say not uh, the the lower uh, people who are working at the lower colleague who are doing the odd jobs uh, they have that you know desi language desi language with them so you need someone who can speak english and you need someone who can do that handle them also so okay. yeah this way you can balance it out but uh, really if you are learning arabic it will really help you out. it will really help you out. Now, for me for me it is it was not a big uh, you know headache you can say uh, okay. yeah being a muslim you are aware of that language firstly but sometimes who are not uh, who are not uh, not in uh, uh, you know religion and they will face uh, that problem initially but i know arabic way before mm-hmm. so Great. some yep. basic terms i know i cannot uh, read fully arabic but i know certain terms yeah right. okay but that but that's amazing so that means that knowing arabic can be a benefit but it's not a requirement for you to get a job in saudi arabia and it is very interesting what you said that of course the the laborers that are working there they are mostly from the south asian countries so you are kind of like a bridge between the management and and do into the laborers because you can do both uh so so that that's amazing thank you very much for sharing that but uh, moving to saudi arabia in general and now you came from india and then you moved to saudi arabia uh, and of course not just these two countries but even if you went to the us or you went to germany uh, there it tends to be a great deal of cultural shock you know you you go there and people have very different culture very different way of life uh how how was that for you when we, when you went to saudi arabia yeah uh, it's quite different it's quite different uh, living culture is quite different you know i have gained you know uh, in last 7 to 8 years a lot of amount of weight because in india you are traveling you are traveling you are you are walking down the street and you are you know your physical exercise is going on whether you go to gym or you don't go to gym but here the process is quite different because uh, the climate you know actually the climate uh, is the factor where you face an issue the climate is hot sometimes it is very cold you cannot uh, go down the street and um, and walk uh, because it's 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 harsh the climate is harsh we have to be in that isolated uh, you know areas uh, where you have to go directly to that a to b whether to go uh, by bus or taxi or you know by car you need that you need that sort of uh, isolation here. yes this is the difference between the indian indian you know living in india where you can uh, easily roam outside go anywhere uh, as you like uh, but when you are in in especially in middle east uh, you cannot each time go outside because of the uh, weather and uh, that's why the night life you can say here is more compared to the day life day life is more isolated the night life is open so whether when the sun is down and you feel little breezy out there so you tend to go uh, anywhere during the night time rather than the day time okay so this, this is what the difference is mm-hmm. that's interesting yep exactly uh, but then the, you know like in the very beginning you said yourself as well that there is there was a great deal of work culture between the two countries of course you you we hit the topic where you mentioned that being in saudi arabia you had a much more freedom to do multiple tasks which was sadly not possible in india 
apart from that because you know work culture also plays a very important role like for example in india for example there is a great deal of formal hierarchy when you're working at the office uh very you know very in the european countries they they tend to have a very flat hierarchy there there isn't really that much formality talking to your colleagues in terms of that how was that working in saudi arabia what do you feel is the work culture when you're working see uh, in uh, india uh, the environment of work culture is you know when you are uh, have the same amount of language being spoken so that that gives you added inv- advantage to have the interaction going pretty smooth or uh, you know your uh, your gelling up is more uh, easy mm-hmm. compared to uh, working in saudi arabia so okay so you have one from india one from egypt for example one from uh, some other uh, countries uh, uh, arabian countries or some asian countries so initially uh, you will find difficulty in interacting it so it will take a lot of time sometimes you will feel that this person is doing something bad for me or something that but it is nothing like that it's nothing like that so you know uh, human human you can understand that globally human are the same <laughs> in respect to of the language spoken in respect to of the uh, people you are uh, being with so this will take you a lot of time uh, uh, to to learn to learn that to learn that but in india in one or two months you are aware that this guy is this and this guy is that so yeah. clear picture is being given but when you are here it takes it takes certain amount of time to understand that person okay. uh, of course of, uh, yeah environment or work uh, work environment or uh, getting uh, uh, some amount of work done by someone okay well that's very nicely described and i i, I of course that is understandable when you're working with people from all around the globe and you said yourself earlier that people come from different backgrounds different countries it just it just takes time getting used to their own culture and their own expectations as well so that is of course very uh, understandable uh thank you for listening and if you have not done so already remember to become a free member at chemical engineering life and do not forget to like share and subscribe to our youtube channel and stay tuned for more upcoming podcasts with chemical engineers thank you and have a great day